Mark. Thanks for joining me. How did you come to be in your current position as the athletic director at the University of San Diego? A lot of strength coaches have been around the nation. Uh, you know, I started out as a Division II football player, and then within that, I found a love and appreciation for the weight room. It helped me become a better player. Um, so I naturally gra gravitated towards it. Uh, within my, my own self and what I was, was studying to be was I actually wanted to be a football coach and a PE teacher. Long story short, fell into the path of wanting to become a strength and conditioning coach. So I was a graduate assistant for the man that I played underneath and longtime friend came into basically becoming a mentor, becoming the guy who taught me my craft and one of the guys that I believe is one of the best in the nation. You know, it's a very competitive industry and so a lot of guys have to make moves depending on where they can find their foot in the door to get themselves to a different position. So I've actually lived in Alabama, I've lived in Nevada, I've lived back in California twice, and then actually me and my wife are actually from Southern California, so this is a nice little niche and a nice little home for us where we can have a personal life as well as a professional life. And to me, it's more in the sense of a personal life that my family is nearby my kids. Um, but I'm still able to do the professional life that I love doing of developing athletes and, and making sure that we do that. How did you put yourself ahead and what made you stand out? When I first got into the industry, I mean, it's been 15 years now. And back then, if you got a master's degree, you were considered above the class. And so I got a GA position and ended up getting the master's degree. And then my first initial thought was, okay, what can I do next to put myself ahead of people? And so I did a summer internship where I volunteered my time. Back then, that was different. You know, that was, wow, this guy's actually going the extra mile to get himself into the door. Now, if you don't do that, you'll never get a chance. I mean, there, there's such small opportunities. There's not a lot of movement that's going around. There's only so many paying jobs that that's a lot of times what you have to do is volunteer your time, and then hopefully it all works out in your sense. So I was really just trying to be ahead of the curve as far as getting a master's degree, doing volunteer work. And then it's a self-taught business. You know, I'm, I'm trying to read as much as I possibly can. I'm trying to beg, borrow, and steal other ideas from other people that have actually worked in the setting and have accomplished some of the things that I'm looking to. What if it's, you know, what are things that have, that have helped with the engagement of your athletes? What are things that have helped with creating culture within your athletes? How have you created competition within your room? And so a lot of that is a lot of times good to have friends who are in the field that are going to share their ideas, what worked for them, and then give you the free reign to figure out what's going to work for your guys. Because if it works for you, it's not necessarily going to work for me. And so trying to educate yourself as much as you can, as often as you can, I mean, it's, it's, a, changing, it's a changing field. And so if you stay back in what was happening in the 90s, you're going to be a dinosaur and you're going to lose out on a lot of stuff. So what does the day today of an athletic director look like? We're busy. We're here early. We're here late. Um, we typically have a lot of teams early in the morning, and then our student athletes go to class. And so from usually 8 to 9 until noon, there's really not a whole lot going on here. There's, there's kids who are in here that are maybe doing a little bit of extra work, and they're older, you know, juniors and seniors, so their class schedule is a little bit different than the younger population, but the younger ones are typically in class from 8 to noon. And so that's a window where we have downtime, we're doing computer work, we're programming, maybe it's some individualized stuff that we're doing as far as a director uh, program that's available to them. But when, when we're really working, it's team after team after team after team after team, especially in this setting. I mean, there's, there's two and a half of us full-time. There's two full-time and a part-time, so I call it two and a half. Um, and so we have 17 teams divided up amongst the three of us to make sure that we're getting the people that we need and the attention to our athletes that we need to. But Early mornings, late evenings, it kind of is the norm to us. And so what opportunities are there for students to get experience at colleges as high profile as this and others around the country, particularly for uh, international students as well as local students? Because there's a lot of noise in Australia about, oh, I'd love to work in the NCAA. So yeah. what kind of opportunities are there? There's always volunteer work. I mean, the hard part about a place like San Diego is it's expensive. And that's a conversation I try to have with every intern that I'm talking to that if they want to come and they want to volunteer their time for us, that's usually our biggest hurdle because you've got to come up with $1,000, you know, potentially for the entire month and you're going to volunteer, you know, six, seven, eight hours of your day 
to come volunteer your time in the weight room. And so a lot of times it's trying to find a happy medium between that. How can we help them out? But finding as much volunteer work as you can, trying to shadow somebody, trying to, you know, do things like you're doing, come and interview somebody and, and engage in what they're doing and learn from other people will give you more tools in your toolbox to have a skill set that will be able to work with what you can. But I've had a lot of people that are on the personal training side. I've had people who are in the private sector that have been able to work their way up through um, the ranks and get to the places. I mean, you hear a lot of times people say that, well, you just have to put in your time. And really and truly, if you're good, there's no time window that there is. And so putting yourself at the best possible position that you can is going to put you in the right position that you need to be at. When I'm hiring somebody, I'm looking for the most qualified person. I'm not looking for the person who's done it for 15 years, that's done it for 20 years. I want the person who's going to give me the added benefit of having an additional person on my staff that's going to be able to help enhance our athletes' abilities and development. And so do you advertise formal internship positions, or do you have that much info of people, students saying, hey, can I volunteer my time, that you don't need to? So we have both. We have where somebody may reach out to me and being proactive, they may say, hey, are there any you know, available opportunities with you, within your staff? Um, and we also advertise it. So we go through the National Strength and Conditioning Coaches Association, we go through the Collegiate Co Coaches Association, as well as there's a website that, that I prefer, but that's just because we have football here, it's called Football School. And there's message boards that are on there that are available jobs, there's an ability for us to post it on there. You know, to be perfectly honest with you, we use Football Scoop more than we use the other ones because it's free. And yep. so I can post it up there every single semester. I can put things up there to, to get the people out here that we need. But I have no gripes about somebody who's reaching out to me. I a lot of times lean towards them, and that's the people that I'm trying to bring in because they are proactive and they're trying to find their foot in the door. And I had people who helped me along the way, so this is my way of kind of giving it back. What three qualities and personal traits do you think are important to be successful in sports science? I think anything in life. If you're disciplined, if you can communicate well and you're organized, you can do almost anything. But for us, because you're handling large groups, you have a lot of different variety of personalities that are out there, we've got to be able to communicate our message clearly. What's the expectation? How is it as far as technique? How are you going to do it? And also be able to demonstrate it well. You know, being disciplined, if I'm going to ask you to be on time because I say that my time is valuable, I've got to be on time because your time is valuable too. You know, being organized, I can't just write on the board, here's what the workout of the day is. I have a plan that goes according to the year, and we're going to make sure that we're doing the things that we need to throughout their training period. And so it's not just going to be, oh, today I feel like bench pressing. Everything that we've done has got a schematic. Everything has got a reasoning based off of practice times, practice schedule, running and conditioning times, as well as where we are as far as their calendar year, preparing them for their seasons. Given their competitiveness for jobs, how quickly can students expect to achieve senior positions? That's a good call. I, to be honest with you, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been fortunate that I've been out of that personally. I've been unfortunate in the sense where I've had a lot of interns that have come in for us either choose that they're going to go a different route, whether it's going into PT, whether it's going into athletic training. And so sometimes we get those individuals that are doing this almost on a trial basis. Well, I'd like to volunteer my time to see if this is really something I want to do. I mean, it's a very demanding job. You have long, long days. You know, there's not a whole lot of thank yous to go around. And so it takes a certain type of person to do it. Um, but at the end of the day, Sometimes it could take upwards of volunteering for two or three years. You know, when you're working a part-time job at night, you're serving tables, you're busing tables, whatever it may be. I mean, it may take some sacrifice to finally get yourself there. But, I mean, if you really look at it, it's a limited number of Division One institutions. And a lot of times that's where people's goals are. And so if you're looking at, let's just do it easy with the math, 350 institutions. Typically, you're going to have anywhere from two to three staff members on top of it. That's about a 1,000 jobs, and so that's in the entire nation. So it's a very competitive, it's a very restricted pool to work from, and so sometimes it does take sacrifice to stick around and stick it out that you can actually get your foot into the door. Is the job satisfaction worth it at the end? 
at the end of the day, to be honest with you, I don't know what else I would do. Uh, to me, I don't, I don't feel like I need the thank yous. I mean, my wife likes to tell me differently that, that I do like a pat on the back. But I do like to sit on the outskirts and watch these players compete and have a sense of pride to know that I've helped them in that position. And I've gotten them to the next level that maybe they couldn't have got to on their own. You know, no, uh, there's never going to be a press conference where they're going to interview me and I'm completely fine with that. But at the end of the day, you know, my benefit, my glory is when I get athletes that are either currently with me to say, you know what, coach, I appreciate it. This is what I've done. Or they come back later and maybe they've gone on to play in the NBA or they've gone and play in, in the NFL and they say, wow, coach, you were right. Or, you know, you helped me to get to this. To me, that's the ultimate thank you aside from the day in the day out. Hey, good job. So that you can get. Yep. Beautiful. Thanks very much. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Man, it is. Easy.